All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. Uh, there will probably be a few people trickling in, but some of the stuff we're going to go over here in the beginning is pretty basic, and we just want to make sure we cover it for those of you that don't know it yet. Um, my name is Grant. I'm with WolfNet Technologies. I'm the head of sales here. I also have Carrie Ritchie with me, who's our service manager, and uh, she's going to be answering questions sitting in the background. Uh, right, right here, before I get into the Property Search 101 webinar, I just want to show you we do have a webinars page that highlights our other webinars coming up. It's at wolfnet.com slash webinars, and it has all the topics that we'll be discussing. Um, so let's get into the Property Search 101 now. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned, uh, my name is Grant Worthen. I'm with Wolfnet. I'm the head of sales here. Carrie Ritchie is our customer service manager. She's also on this call and will be answering questions. You should have a widget for your GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar uh, that has a section titled Questions. And if you have any questions, you can type those in on that field, and Carrie will be fielding those as we go through this here. And then at the end, we'll also open it up for questions as well. So a little bit of background on who Wolfnet is. Uh, Wolfnet's a real estate technology firm specializing in property search solutions, websites, and customized applications. We do anything from IDX property searches to VOW property searches, uh, MLS services, and other agent producti productivity tools and modules for agents and brokers across the country. We're based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're privately owned and have been in business for 16 years, specifically about 12 or 13 years in the real estate industry. Um, our first market was our local market here in Minneapolis. We, it's called the North Star MLS, and, and we got into uh, building property searches and lead capture for realtors here, uh, specifically a local realtor named Roger Fazenden. So what is IDX? I just want to go over a few of the basics before we get into the actual Property Search 101 slides and demo. Um, IDX stands for Internet Data Exchange, uh, also known as Broker Reciprocity. And it's a system in which brokers give each other blanket permission to display their listings on each other's websites through a property search. Uh, having an IDX solution on your website gives consumers access to all available listing information in your area. And the leads that are generated from all the listings go to you. So IDX is essentially marketing data, and it allows uh, individual agents and realtors as well as brokers to display listings on their websites and generate leads from that marketing data. So why is IDX important? It's pretty difficult today for real estate agents to be successful without a website presence. Um, your clients expect you to have a website for a number of different reasons. Uh, one is you know, a way to show credibility as well as the other to search for listings. Not only can a website and an IDX solution be used as a way to show credibility, but it also can lend generating additional business as consumers' primary reason for coming to your website is to access and search listings. If you're not providing an IDX property search solution on your website, a consumer will find another real estate agent that is. So go next down the list on Google and find that next site that does have a property search tool uh, available to, for their use. So I'll give you some interesting statistics. Um, according to the 2010 study that the National Association of Realtors did, uh, today's buyers rely most heavily on the Internet and their real estate agents to find a home for them. 89% of buyers today use the internet to find a home, and 88% of home buyers use real estate agents with the internet. And then also via Inman, as of last year, that number has actually gone up to 94%. Uh, there's also a study done by the California Association of Realtors, and that study concluded that 92% of internet buyers found their agents on a website. So these are some, some real interesting statistics, and we, we put these into this slide because it just shows that consumers today are using websites to you know, not only search for homes but to find realtors. And a lot of the consumers that are going to these websites are early on in the buying stage if they haven't yet reached out to a realtor, and they're searching for homes and want this, this kind of data uh, 
to you know do the research before they actually reach out to you. So it's important that you have these tools that we're going to go over here shortly on your website and you're providing these tools to the consumer. So what features will I find in a property search? Um, you've got your search and that, that search is either typically a form-based search or a map-based search. Um, there's also other types of searches out there like lifestyle searches. And you've obviously got your search results pages. So once the consumer runs that search, whether it be on a form or a map, uh, results of properties will be on a results page with lead capture. You have the listing detail page. So each detail page for each listing in the MLS that has your branding as well as all of your contact information and tools that the consumer uses as they get, as they get further along in the buying process. And then you have lead capture points. So again, those are those tools that the consumer is going to use as they get further along in the buying process, like Search Saver, being able to save an email and get automatic notifications of listings that match their criteria, as well as favorites. So as they get as they get down the road, they want to start to save favorite properties so when they come back to your website, they can access those properties easily. So the first, the form search, here's a, a screenshot of our form-based property search. You'll see that on the form-based search, across the top, you have your active listing search, open houses search, sold search, and foreclosure search. Now, something I want to point out first is that uh, open houses searches, sold searches, and foreclosure searches, this data depends on the MLS that you're in. Some MLSs might provide this data, some might not. Um, and then down below those search types, you have your primary search type. So by county, city, by address, zip, by school district, and by body of water. These happen to be the primary search types available in the North Star MLS, your local in Minneapolis, that we have available to search by. Some MLSs might have other search types, such as school, uh, school, uh, school name or uh, lake name or uh, subdivision would be a good example of one as well. A lot have subdivision as an option. Down below our primary search types, we have a cities drop down. So you can select your cities, bring your cities over, and add them to the right-hand side. And then, of course, you have your property search criteria, so your property type single family, condo, townhouse, duplex, multifamily, and then price ranges and features. So price range, bedrooms, bathrooms, property types, square footage, style of home, etc. Now in the map search, it works similar to the form-based search. Uh, most property searches have some form of a map built into them these days. And the way that the map search works, or the way that ours specifically works, is that you would select your primary search type across the top. And those search types work in conjunction and dynamic with the map down below. So we would select county city. We would grab a specific city and add it over to the right-hand side. Then we would select our single or our, our property types, our price ranges, our bedrooms, and our bathrooms. And those listings would dynamically update on this map. And we could hover over them to view, to view the details of that specific listing. And I'm going to show you a demo of this later on. The search results pages now. So when we run our search, whether it be from a form or from a map, uh, the results are going to display in a list or a grid view. We give you, the realtor, the option to, to custom tailor the display for your consumers. So you can display it in a list view like you see here, or you can display it in a grid view. You can sort results by selected criteria. So towards the top, you'll see that the results on this page are sorted by descending in price. You could sort results by ascending in price, and there's a number of other different ways you can sort results. The refine results is on the left-hand side. So you'll see over here on the left-hand side, you can actually refine your search criteria. Say we just ran a search for a property, a single-family home in the city of Minneapolis between 200 and 300,000, and we decide, you know, I'm going to kick it up to 320,000. We could refine our criteria over here on the left-hand side using refined search. Lead capture calls to action are built in on each listing, uh, not only on the listing details page, but also on the listing results page, as you see here. So we have calls to action for view details, request showing, inquire about a listing, and add to favorites. Now these are the tools that the buyers 
are going to tend to use as they get further along in, the, in their search process and closer to actually buying a home. They're going to want to start to save favorite properties. They're going to want to start to save searches to get those email automated email updates. And they're going to want to inquire or ask questions to you, the realtor, the expert. And then we also have property banners on the search results page that, no, that notify the consumer of the status. So if it's a new listing, uh, if it's been listed within seven days, it would say new across here on the top. If it's a foreclosed home, so we get foreclosed data in your MLS, we will label the houses as foreclosures. And then, of course, from the results page, you can click to go into more detailed information and in the listing details pages. When we get into the listing details pages, then I'm going to work from top to bottom here. So across the top, you have your price range, your bedrooms, your bathrooms, your property types. You'll see social media tools here. So we allow the consumer to share listings with their friends. Uh, today's buyers, especially the younger generation, are using these social media tools to share listings with their friends. Um, they're not going out to two or three friends. They're posting listings to Facebook, your listings to Facebook, and they're sending that out to five or 600 friends. So it's important we have social media tools in here. A little side note um, on some statistics that we have on the social media tools since we've added them. We're seeing a, so there's what's called a viral lift rate. And what viral lift essentially means is this, how many listings need to be posted via social media tools to get a click back to that realtor's website. And our viral lift rate right now is 131% from our property searches, meaning that for every 100 consumers that that are sharing a listing via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever the social media channel, 131 new users or new traffic are coming back to your site. And so these social media tools are built into every listing detail page. We also have Google Street View, Microsoft Bird's Eye View, as well as a number of other mapping views built into the property details page as well. So you can see here, we have our, our standard listing photo from the MLS. But then up top, the consumer can actually get down onto that street level, cruise down the road, get an idea of what the neighborhood looks like. This is a great tool, and a lot of the realtors that we work with love this tool because it gives the consumer the ability to actually get an idea of what that neighborhood looks like, and it decreases the number of listing appointments or listings that the agent actually goes out and shows because a lot of times the consumer will weed some of those out if they see you know, that next door the house is torn down or whatever it might be. Maybe there's a truck growing with a bunch of grass in the back of it. So these mapping tools have become real valuable, um, and we incorporate these into all the listing detail pages of our properties. You've got your property photos down below, and we have those in a slideshow. Your primary photo up above. We do have a view full-size slideshow, so this will pull in really large photos, as large as we can get from the MLS. And then, of course, the property search is built all around lead capture. So you have your tools over on the right-hand side, request to showing, inquire about a listing, add to favorites, save a search, etc. These are those tools that the buyer uses or the consumer uses as they get further along in the buying process on your website. And these are those tools that you can use to capture their contact information. And then one other thing that we have, too, and I'll show you in the demo, is we do have neighborhood and school data incorporated into every listing details page, and that's pretty cool as well. So the lead capture points. On the search page, on the form-based search, you have favorites, search saver, and login, as well as save search down below. So say the consumer comes to your form-based search or a map-based search. They select their price range, their bedrooms, their bathrooms, their property type, and their city. And then they click search results or save search. They can actually save that search and get updated email alerts of new listings that match their search criteria. From the results page, again, I showed you the lead capture points. You've got view, remark, or view details, inquire about a listing, request a showing, and add to favorites. Those are all lead capture tools. The search saver. So the way the search saver works is first they would select their city, select they, second they would select their property search criteria and features, and then they would save search. Once the consumer does that and takes that action and authenticates their email address, your property search and your website is sending them emails. And you can see an example of the email down below. 
with new listings as it matches their search criteria. So it's similar to what you can do currently in the MLS, a lot of you, but it's allowing the consumer to actually do this on their own. And the nice part about the consumer being to do it, being able to do it on their own, is that we know the consumer is always changing their search criteria. They can do this on their own. They can change their search. They can change their price range, change their property types, etc. And it's a great tool to keep yourself in front of them and build a, re a relationship with them behind the scenes with minimal effort. Favorite. So consumers can save favorite properties. That is one of those lead capture tools. Um, when a consumer saves a, a favorite property, they have a folder similar to this screenshot right here that's titled Grant Favorites. There's a star on every listing when it's a favorite property. And it also would say favorite over here, and you, the consumer has the ability to remove or add favorites. Now, you as the realtor also have the ability to view the consumer's profile, and you can view their favorites folder to get an idea of what type of property they're looking for. Also, the call to action for ad favorites is on every listing details page, as you can see highlighted here in red. So I'm going to go into a quick demo of the form-based search, the map-based search, the listing results page, and the listing details page. So let's start with the form-based search first. So the form-based search, what we would first do is we're searching by county, city. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select a specific city. You're going to see a live search count towards the bottom. This, in this market, or this MLS, we have 55,000 listings available on the MLS right now. If I add Edina over, you'll see that live search count drop to 399 listings. Say we change our maximum price range to 250,000. Now we're down to 113. And if we go single family, we're down to 22 matches. From here, we can click on search results to go into the search results page. And from the search results page, we then of course, as I went over, we have the refined search on the left, the call to action, the more information on the right, the lead capture. So if the consumer was to click on request a showing or inquire about a listing, a lead would be generated for you, the realtor. Before I go into the listing details page, I want, I'm going to demonstrate the map-based search. So similar to the form-based search, with the map-based search, we can select a city. But now rather than having to click search results, we'll see that our results are automatically and dynamically populated down below on the map. And as we hover over those results, it will give us property details on that listing. If we do an address zip search by map, again, all of the search types work in conjunction with the map. Consumers, as they're driving down the road, they see a house, they don't write down an MLS number. They're going to write down a street name or an address. So say the consumer's driving down the road, if they were on Knox, they remember they were on Knox Avenue, it will show you all listings on the map on Knox Avenue. Same with school districts. School district works in conjunction with the map as well. You have a consumer that, that knows they want their kids in a specific school district. Maybe it's Eden Prairie. We can tell them, if you search by my school district search, and you select Eden Prairie, you now know that your kids will be in the Eden Prairie School District. And again, the map will, will show a best fit with all the listings on the map. I'm going to go back and run a lifestyle search, too. We also have lifestyle search available as well. So lifestyle search allows the consumer not only to search by price range, bedrooms, bathrooms, property types, but the lifestyle search gives the consumer the ability to search based on importance of highly rated schools, low crime ratings, median home income, type of neighborhood, cost of living, and commute time. Um, we get our data from a, from a number of different census bureaus, and then we get our school data from greatschools.org. So say we're a consumer and highly rated schools are extremely important to us, and we have a maximum price range of 250000 You'll see that the map has now grouped listings into the areas that highly rated schools reside in, and listings are under $250,000. Again, this is just one of those really cool tools. It's a sticky tool to keep the consumer on your website longer and to get them to use the tools to capture them as a lead. If we go into the property details page now, I'm going to go directly in from the map-based search.
from the property details page across the top, you have your branding, and you have lead capture calls to action, requests for showing, inquire about a listing. You have the details, so price range, bedrooms, bathrooms, property types. You have the photos down below. We have the mapping up above. So you'll see we have map view, hybrid view of the property, aerial view, house view, so it's that Microsoft oblique imagery. And we can actually make this larger if, if we like as well. And then we also have Google Street View. And we can go full screen on that as well. Scrolling on down, here's our lead capture call to action on the right-hand side of the photo. Request a showing, inquire about a listing, add to favorite. Here's our neighborhood information we talked about. So on every listing details page, we have neighborhood and demographic data as well as school. You've got information on every single specific listing in the MLS, from median home values to home appreciation charts, to ages of homes, homes owned versus homes rented, homes vacant, average rental cost, percentage of rented homes. There's a lot of data back here. I'd encourage you to come in here and take a look at this data and play around with it. Schools is another one of my favorites. Under the school section, for this particular listing and this neighborhood, we've got all sorts of school information on high school graduates, graduate degrees, expenditures per student, and it compares this data for this neighborhood against the city, the county, and the national average. You've got some more charts on expenditures per student, students for guidance, counselors, students for teacher, and then down below we actually have our schools listed out. So this particular listing is in the Edina Senior High School school district. We can get data on the Edina Senior High School as well. So you've got students per grade, you've got grades 10 through 12, number of teachers, et cetera, and we can actually click to go to greatschools.org and find out additional information on this school if we want as well. If we were to click Add to Favorites, This is where that lead capture form would be. This is what the consumer would fill out as they get further along in that buying process to inquire about listings, add to favorite, save searches, et cetera. So this is how the lead is generated. As we scroll on through the property details page, then we have property description and an overview on the listing itself. And that concludes our demo for today. We're going to stick around, and if you have any additional questions, there should be a hand button on your widget for the webinar. If you click the hand button, I can unmute you and you can ask questions. Otherwise, you can also use the questions box to ask Carrie or myself directly. Uh, thank you for attending, and we hope that you'll come back for some of our future webinars. Butch, go ahead. Judy, did you have a question? Yes, I typed in my question, but I was teaching a little class on how to use the WolfNet um, on, on the Keller Williams system, and one of the agents in my class was very put off by uh, um, the ability we have to look at what the client is looking at and what they've saved and whatever. He equated it to some law action that was going on with Facebook. And I couldn't get it through to him that, you know, once they sign up on our site, they can, you know, we can see and do whatever we want. But is there some way I can explain it to him? Yeah, you're, 
the agent that you're working with, so we have a back office with our property search solution. Yeah. And if he logs into the back office, and we also, uh, I will note that we have a webinar on the back office coming up as well. But if he, lo he or she logs into the back office, you can access all of the information for the leads that have been generated, such as favorite searches, uh, saved searches, any inquiries, et cetera. And so you can see the, the uh, you can see the searches that have been done by the lead, and then you can actually reach out to that client. Right, I understand that. And that's what I was showing him that he was had the ability to do. And he got really put off and actually walked out of the class because he said that this was against the law and face, some people were suing Facebook for the same thing. And, um, I'm trying to get him to understand it isn't the same thing. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure how to answer that question okay. because, okay. you know, it, it's, that's his perception of it and yeah. I'm not that, you know, it may okay. just be best that you leave that one. Yeah, leave him alone. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, for any other questions that have not been answered through the chat pane, we are going to, we have a record of them and we have your information. We will answer them and get back to you in an email. Thanks for attending.